Hey everybody, Johnny Stewart here, and I broke my high E string recording the solo on a new song today, so I thought that I would um, show everybody how to change your strings, since I have to change my E string. Now as you can see, I've just got the guitar sitting on my lap. I haven't got any sort of special table like you see in, in a lot of videos, so I can change a string anywhere, including on, on a job or whatever else is going on. And I'm going to be putting Ernie Ball Power Slinky Custom Gauge 3220s on it. And those range from a high E, which is an 11, to a low E that's a 48. Where a couple of the strings are a little bit lighter than a heavy gauge string, and a few of the strings are heavier than a light gauge string. So I'll open up the package here of all six strings. Now you'll see a lot of videos online where they take all the strings off the guitar and then put all six new strings on at once. I don't like to do that. That's not necessarily wrong, but the reason I don't like to do it that way is because by changing just one string at a time, you can maintain the tension on the neck. And if your guitar was in really good playing condition before, intonation-wise, and, and as far as the truss rod adjustment and the pitch of the neck went, then hopefully you won't have to make very many of those adjustments once you put the new set of strings on. So, we've got my broken high E string here, which broke on its own, <laughs> as I said a few minutes ago, when I, I was trying to play a solo on a new song that I'm recording. So, I'll just come down here and I'll just feed this string out and take it out. All right, so now I'll come up to the tuning peg and as you can see around the tuning peg there is a little bit of string left. So I'll take that and I'm gonna set that off to the side. Again, keep it somewhere safe because those string ends are sharp. So I'll show you what I like to do with them just to keep myself and everybody in the house safe. So if you press down on the garbage can, you don't, <laughs> you don't injure your finger. So now I'll take my high E string out, the 11, and it comes nice and tightly wound here from Ernie Ball. You undo it, and now it's just this easy. There's an end with a ball on it. That's the ball end. And then there's an end without it. Take the end without the ball end on it, and I'm going to put that at the very bottom of the bridge, down here, and feed it through. And it might take you a second to find it, that's okay. So I'll feed it through, and I'll pick up the string so it doesn't scratch the beautiful top on this guitar, and I'll pull it through. We'll take this same end again without the ball on it, and we're going to put that through our tuning peg. And you'll see that there's a little hole in the tuning peg here, and we'll put it through, and we'll feed it through until it's almost all the way through, but you want to have at least a couple inches of give up here around the second or third fret so you've got some room to wind it. So to start winding it, what I like to do is I like to take the top end of the string after it's through the tuning peg, and I like to bend it just a little bit over so you've got a little bit of tension on it, and then you'll start to wind it. For the top three strings on a, on a Les Paul or, or another similar guitar with three strings on each side of the headstock, you're going to wind it toward the body. I'm going to take my index finger here, as you can see. I'm holding it just just very gently against the headstock. So that way it winds from the bottom up. So if the string is like this on the side of the saddle, that's no good. Same thing if the string is over here on that side of the saddle, that's no good. There will be a little groove in the saddle and you want to make sure you get that string right in the groove of that saddle because that's where it'll stay in place for you when you're playing. So keep on winding it until it's just about in tune. Whenever you change your strings, even just one string, they'll come out of pitch pretty quickly. To help minimize that when you're actually playing the guitar, you can take the string and just gently, just gently, don't, don't yank the string right off the guitar, but, but just gently pull it a little bit. Now listen. See how it's about a half a tone under pitch? You tune it back up again. Then you do that again. And hear how it's just slightly under pitch again? Now tune it back up again. So now that string is very close, just by ear, to where it's ultimately going to be. Just wrap that string right around those three fingers. Gently, it doesn't have to be super tight. And I take the ball end and I put it through a couple times. I'll take my empty high E string package and I'll take this wrapped string 
and I'll put it right in there. And then guess what? You're reaching the garbage, you're not gonna prick your finger. <laughs> I'll also do that with this little piece that had been wrapped around the tuning peg of my high E string that stayed on there when the string broke because my, my string happened to break up at the tuning peg. So I'll take that and I'll drop that in there too. And then there it is. And then just put that aside. So now we'll move on to our next string. And remember, I didn't break my B string. I had just broken the high E string. We'll just keep winding it down until it's loose enough to pull the string over the tuning peg. And then it might be bent around there. So now you've got the whole string right up. So now our next string is the B string, the 14 gauge. We've got these six long extra string ends. Now some people like to leave them on because they think it's cool. I personally don't like to leave them on because I don't want to poke myself or somebody else in the eye. You can also just use a pair of scissors even though that might take a little bit more hand strength. But you'll take something <laughs> to cut the strings and you, you want to hold the string fairly tight. You take your cutter and put it all the way down toward the tuning peg, pretty much up against it. But again, don't scratch anything. And then apply enough pressure to be able to cut it. And then it comes right off. And then you don't have to worry about taking your own eye out or a band member's eye out with it or a family member's eye out. Now we've got our new strings on, but we don't have it tuned up all the way. We've gotten it close during this process, but it's definitely not fully in tune. Hear it? So if I try to play something with it, that's not really in tune yet. Take a good chromatic tuner to tune each string just like we normally would. All right, everybody, so I hope that video was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. If it was helpful and if you did enjoy it, then please like it on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel, and let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments. Take care.